In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use the Jazz Mutant Lemurs objects as a sound design tool. First I connect to the lemur. Then I can grab uh, the fader from the palette and move it into the workspace. And now I can resize it, reshape it, uh, and place it wherever I want on the screen. And as soon as I let go, it'll appear on the lemur itself. I can move it around. Now I can use the basic editing commands like copy, paste. I can also really customize my own layout by changing the colors of these objects. So I can just click on an object and then I can go to the palette over here and I can choose from a whole spectrum of colors. This means you can make your template look exactly like you want it to. To map these objects to controls in your software, it couldn't be easier. Live's master fader could be controlled by a lima fader. Select the MIDI output, then a MIDI message. We usually use control change messages. Then I just need to select a controller number. You can choose any number as long as it's different to all the others used. Now go into Live, click on the MIDI map button. There's a similar feature in most other apps too. Click on the master fader, and then just move the fader on the lima. Now it's mapped. Now the virtual fader on the lima controls the master in our software. It's dead easy. Now we can map stuff. We're going to delete that and show you how you can use the lima in the studio to make a really dull, boring loop into something really exciting. So we're going to use the operator in Live. Using this synth, I'm going to make a really, really basic patch, just a little blip, a little impulse. And I'm going to use a wave with lots of harmonics. I'm going to use the square. Now I'm going to make a really basic loop. I think you'll agree, that's pretty simple stuff. So now I'm going to add an effect on that. Just a, a filter delay. So the filter delay from live is basically just uh, three delay lines, each with a different filter on. Now I'm going to deactivate two of the delay lines, so we've just got one left. Now I can change the filter frequency on this delay. Um, or I can change the bandwidth. Now it would be nice if I could control this from the lemur instead. So if we go over to the lemur, now I'm going to use this multiple object. And it's most basic, this is an XY controller. So if I move this ball along the X, we can send out one parameter. The Y, we can send out another. So now I need to map this. So choose a MIDI output, choose a control change message, and a controller number. Now moving in the X direction sends out controller number one. So let's do the same with Y. Let's choose a different controller number. Uh, I'm going to use number 11, and you'll see why in a second. Now we can go into the MIDI map mode in live, simply click on frequency, move in the X direction, and click on bandwidth, and move in the Y direction. So now this should be mapped and ready to control. This has given me much more natural, intuitive, physical control of this effect. One of the exciting things about the lemurs objects is that most of them have this special physics mass spring mode. So if I select this, the ball acts a bit like a ball bouncing around in a room. And I can change the amount of throw it has. So if I go to the uh, friction parameter, I can change this to zero, and it'll keep on bouncing indefinitely. You can use this like an LFO to control your sound parameters. If I want to see this on the jazz editor interface as well, I just need to click on sync here. If I try setting the friction to 1, you can see that as soon as I let go of the ball, it comes to an immediate stop. The lemurs objects are also interactive. They can influence each other in different ways. If we add another fader, for example, this fader can actually control the amount of friction inside this multiple object. So if we rename the fader, so if we rename it friction or fricked, now if we go to the multiple object and go to the friction panel, we can use fricked x and enter it into the box like this having the fader at the bottom will now give us a multiple friction of zero gradually moving it up will increase the friction or we can choose any value in between giving us more control over the sound Now with this effect we have three delay lines, so if we activate the other two and get control for these from the lemur by going to the properties tab and typing in three balls. Now we have three balls to play with. So we need to make sure that each one sends out a different pair of controller numbers. If you remember X was sending out controller number one before, but now if I type in one, it'll auto fill from one to three. So in the X direction that's one for each ball. Similarly for Y, it fills from eleven to thirteen. So now we need to map each of the new balls. So we've already mapped the purple one. So first the yellow, 
x is frequency, y is bandwidth, and for the green, the same. You can already hear how simply controlling these sounds from the lemur is making it sound a lot more interesting and dynamic. And perhaps most importantly, it's zero effort.